So here we are again, out here at, it's called the Indian Creek Equestrian uh, Campground. And as the name says, it's a more of a equestrian horse campground, but it's closed right now anyway. Um, it's April 14th. And this is also the alternate access to um, Colorado Trail, segment one. So the nice thing about about this trail is you can take your dogs on it, whereas the Waterton Canyon of segment one of the Colorado Trail, you're not allowed to have your dogs because of the wildlife. They have some big horn sheep back there that are protected. So can't bring Fido along with you in Waterton Canyon. But they give you this access, they provide this access through uh, Indian Creek Equestrian Campground. And the trail's uh, actually called Indian Creek Trail. Um, that meets up with segment one up at Lenny's Rest. And we'll show you that once we get up there. But uh, yeah, so far it's a nice day. It's about 35-ish degrees right now. Uh, quick little dusting of snow from last night. So yeah, we got about four and a half miles up to Lenny's Rest from the parking lot here. It's a fee area, so it is seven bucks, so bring some cash. If you're planning on even day hiking back here, you need to pay the, the seven dollars to uh, use the parking area. But it's monitored um, while we were there getting our stuff ready. Um, there was actually a Colorado Parks and Wildlife vehicle that drove drove through, so they, they do monitor it throughout the day. Um, so yeah, we got about, like I said, four and a half miles up to Lenny's Rest, and I'll get back with you if we see something cool or see any wildlife, but uh, yeah, check back in with you later. So we just came across our first water crossing here on the uh, alternate access Indian Creek Trail. You can see that's Bear Creek right there and the uh, little Colorado Trail blaze on the top of the sign. The last time we were out here was right out about a month ago, uh, middle of March, and this was all frozen over, all, all iced over. But we had a little front move through last night that dropped, I don't know, trace to an inch of snow. So it's been been a nice nice walk so far, but no problem on with water uh, this trip. Last trip was a little, little sketchy in the middle of March, but I don't think we'll have any issues this time. So here we are at our first real uh, trail junction. So we just came up from over here, from down there behind me. You can see the Indian Creek Trail number 800 sign right there with uh, two miles to the trailhead. That was the trailhead that we started at down at the uh, Indian Creek Equestrian Campground. So we've come in two miles so far and when, when you come up that trail there you want to go over here to your left um, and you can see the trail sign over there Indian Creek Trail number 800 again so you want to keep following that because if you go straight you can also follow another trail and that will eventually get you out to segment one, but it's a lot longer. You actually actually dip down and uh, kind of come up the backside of Lenny's Rest almost. So like I said, you come up Indian Creek Trail 800 and you want to continue on Indian Creek Trail 800 up there to your left. So here we are in a Nice little break spot. Um, there was two, there's only about two pretty good climbs coming up after that, that little rest spot where the uh, trail junction was. And they're not, they're not killer. They're not, not, nothing too hard. They're pretty short, which is, which is nice. But for, for two old out of shape guys like us, it was, had us huffing and puffing a little bit. But once you get up those, those climbs, you have this nice little, um, I'm calling it a kind of a ridge walk, but you're up on this spine of this this mountain here and just really awesome views off to, off to each side. So um, yeah, I'll kind of 
walk along with you a little bit, show you what the trail looks like. Um, and we keep, me and Paul keep remarking that uh, last time we were out here was, was like middle of March, like I said, and it was ice everywhere and, and we haven't hit any ice. So, so the hiking's actually really, really nice this time. And we're, we have a good pace going, good clip. We've been walking, I don't know, maybe two hours now and we're probably three miles in. So, so a good, good clip. Um, like I said, two, two pretty big climbs, two, uh, only two climbs. And uh, even those aren't, aren't killer, aren't, aren't too bad, but yeah, let's uh, flip you around here and get a little shot of the trail walking down this, uh, this ridge walk here. So like I said, this is the alternate access to segment one. And for most of the, most of the hike up here, I haven't even used my, my trekking poles. Other than those two, two climbs, those are the only times I've even used, even brought them out. I've been carrying them in my hand most of the time. Well, you got the scrub oak and the pine trees, of course. We've only passed oh, two other guys, two other trail runners, and they're apparently it's turkey season right now. So we've passed two hunters with shotguns. That's a little startling coming, coming around the corner and you have a guy carrying a shotgun walking towards you, all decked out in camo. But other than that, two trail runners, two hunters and trail's been ours. There's a good little overview. Big old pink granite outcroppings and but yeah, views for days. So here's another trail intersection you come to as you're coming in from Indian Creek Trailhead. So as you can see the sign behind me, you can get to Roxborough State Park. Uh, Indian Creek Trail keeps going that way. This is the one, if you remember from the last trail intersection, um, where I said it, it, you can eventually get up to the Colorado Trail. So that goes from, from where we were and comes back up in here to get up to the Colorado Trail. So it's just a little shorter the way that, that we went if you make a left there at that trail, trail ju junction. And then you can see the bottom over there, Colorado Trail, number 1776. So I'll show you what we came down and kind of where we're headed. So that's what you come down, as you can see there, Indian Creek Trail had three and a half miles that away and it's a pretty steep downhill um you know you got to make up for the the two climbs in the beginning so you got to go down sometime so like i said you come down that that hill there and you want to bear to your left as the sign says to go over to colorado trail which is right down that way so that's what we'll do and this is going to come up to lenny's rest here and uh probably less than a mile um we'll hit lenny's rest and have a little lunch and continue on. So we'll check back in with you once we get up there. So here we are coming up to the junction of the Colorado Trail. Like I said, the uh, Indian Creek Trail intersects into it here, up at Lenny's Rest. And over here, around the corner, is Lenny's Rest itself. We just had a gentleman ride up here on a bike, which I think the uphill is worse than the return trip because it's all downhill from here. So yep, the trail continues that way. There on that tree, you can kind of see the first Colorado Trail blaze on the trail itself. And so we're gonna sit here and hang out a little bit. So yeah, we're gonna sit here at Lenny's Rest, hang out a little bit, get some water, get some lunch, just take a little break. So we'll check back in with you later. Okay, like I said earlier, we uh, just came up here to the Colorado Trail, just intersected it here at Lenny's Rest there in the background beside Paul. And uh, so yeah, this is the first time where you can uh, intersect the real, I guess I guess you could call it the real segment one um, that comes up from Watering Canyon. But like I said previously, you can't have dogs down on down in Watering Canyon because of the 
bighorn sheep, they're protected down there and they don't want the, the dogs messing with them. So if you're a canine lover and you want to bring your dog out for a hike out to the, do the uh, first segment of the Colorado Trail, you're going to have to come up Indian Creek Trail number 800, which will intersect here at Lenny's Rest with Colorado Trail 1776. So you can see behind me there, um, little blaze on the tree, Colorado Trail blaze. That's the direction we're heading. And our first, I guess, first camping opportunity is about 0.8 miles down the trail um, to Bear Creek. And that's pretty much guaranteed water there. Um, it, it, it's flowing, it, it was even flowing back in March when we were here last time. So that's where we're headed. It's only 1230 right now. So once we get there, we'll make a decision if we're gonna push on. Um, past that, water is a little more iffy, definitely at this time of the year. So that's our, that's our big concern is, is, is water right now. Um, and we're confident that, that Bear Creek will be flowing, have water. So we may just, just post up there and take an afternoon siesta and get up and start processing some firewood for, for tonight's fire. So we'll walk down this trail a little bit and uh, check back with you for you in a few. But like I was saying previously, this this trail is really well maintained, and uh, looks like we got another trail runner coming up towards us. I guess. How's it going? Good. But like I said, this trail is really well maintained, and it's. Um, it has it's has a where they allow equestrian use on it, so it's graded really nice. Um, so yeah, we're kind of working our way down into the bottom of this little little draw here, down to Bear Creek, and like I said a minute ago, where you're almost I don't want to say guaranteed water. That was probably a bad bad word to use. But like I said, we were here in March and there was, there was definitely ice on the, the stream itself, but they had, there was some open water. Um, but yeah, this is, like I said, it's a really well-maintained trail. The Colorado Trail Foundation has work parties. I'd, I'd be willing to say almost every weekend of the summer that they come out here and they, they'll, they'll work on a section. Obviously there's, there's many, many groups spread across Colorado that, that help maintain, maintain this trail, but they do an amazing job. Um, so the trail runs all the way from, from Watering Canyon here about, that is about eight miles behind us now, um, the start of it, of Watering Canyon, all the way out to Durango. So yeah, like I said, this, this trail runs all the way from Watering Canyon here southwest of Denver, all the way down to Durango is the, the terminus of it. Um, it is, I don't think it's one of, considered one of the long trails in the States, but it is 456 miles, I believe, is the entire, entire through of it. And a lot of people won't start their, their through hike of the trail until July, the July time frame. That gives the San Juans down in the southwest portion of Colorado a chance for all that snow to melt out. And uh, just gives you some, some better weather to hike in. So yeah, this is, this is the Colorado Trail proper, I guess you want to say. We're off the Indian Creek Trail, number 800, which is the alternate access to segment one. And this is kind of what you get, the nice 
piney woods to walk through and a little trace of snow from yesterday's front that moved through. So yeah, we're gonna hoof it on here for a little bit and catch you back at camp. Well, Paul's idea didn't pan out like usual. So we came up here to what our potential second campsite was gonna be. And there's just nowhere to hang, nowhere to put up a hammock. So we're gonna backtrack a mile and a half and go back down to Bear Creek. Um, I don't know if you can hear West Bear Creek beside me running, but we were gonna come up to West Bear Creek and find a spot up there, but like I said, we could we just can't find a spot for, for hammocks. Now, tent campers, yeah, you have two really nice spots, one on each side of the of uh, West Bear Creek that you can set up. But lesson learned. So at least it's all downhill from here, mile and a half back to uh, Bear Creek, where we were going to set up and where we had actually set up in March. So chalk it up to a lesson learned. Extra three miles of hiking for the day. Won't kill anybody. So heading back down and catch up with you later. Well, here we are. Made it back to Bear Creek. It's down, uh, if you see the fire pit over there on the left-hand side, it's down that hill past the fire pit is uh, Bear Creek. And we have our beers down there and a beer weir. So we have our priority straight. Before we set anything up, we take care of the beer. But uh, yeah, if you can see where my pack is there, the, the orange one, I'm going to string up, uh, if you imagine the, those four trees are diamonds, I'm going to go for the, the top top and the bottom point of the diamond is where I'm going to set my, my hammock up. So it'll give me plenty of room. Might be a little, a little touchy getting in. I'll have to uh, fight with that tree there where my bag's uh, propped up against, but I think we can make it work. So uh, that's what we're going to do now. Paul's going to be down uh, just below me um, on the opposite tree uh, beside the one I'm tying up to. So uh, yeah, then our fire pit, like I said, is down there to the left. And we already found some wood that uh, somebody had, had processed at another campsite. And I mean, there's a ton of it. Um, so we're going to do some work on that, that fire ring, hopefully clear out some of the ash and stuff and there's there's like cans and trash and and stuff in it so yeah now it's just the uh, point of setting up and actually right now i'm standing on the colorado trail so that's how close we're we're setting up to the to the actual trail so might give you a little uh time lapse of of the setup here if i can figure out the camera i'm upping my camera game on this trip so if i can figure out how to take some some time lapse photos i'll set up the little tripod and see if I can get a time-lapse video of a, of a setup for you. Well, here we are finally at camp and you can see up there above my head that we're both pretty much set up. Paul has the camouflage set up up there and I have the, uh, it's called olive yellow actually, that tarp color. So yeah, kind of set up here, but I am decided to take a break and have a nice little adult beverage. This is the Sierra Nevada Hazy Little Thing IPA. It's really good. It's a, a New England style IPA is what they call it. So it was a little hazy, um, but yeah, really good. This is, um, I've had a couple out of the six pack already. Um, this is the first of the day, but, but yeah, great beer if you like IPA. Um, citrusy, a lot of citrus notes in the, in the hops, but, but yeah, very good. I, I highly recommend it. I have another one of these, and then I also have a, uh, it's called Whimsy. It's another New England style IPA, and that one's from Four Noses Brewing out here in Colorado. Um, so again, I had that one too. That's more, um, even more tangerine, I would say, whereas this is uh, grapefruit and a little bit of pineapple um, notes in it. But yeah, like I said, we're we're pretty much set up. Paul's up there putting on his doors on his, on his tarp, and then he'll join me and um, I'll flip you around here in a second to uh, show you the fire pit that needs quite a bit of work. Uh, when we were here in March, we 
tried to empty a lot of the ash out. Um, people just just come here, and there a lot of them is uh, a lot of it's through hiking the Colorado Trail, so they don't they have a fire, and then they don't clean out the ashes in the morning and stuff like that. So there's a lot of ash buildup in the bottom of it, um, which kind of hampered our fire last time. We it never really got got going really good. So we're gonna spend some time cleaning that thing out. Uh, rebuild it a little bit maybe and then they, there's a bunch of just big old logs in there that that we're gonna try and get rid of so uh yeah just kind of hanging out waiting for dinner gonna have some beef jerky snack here in a minute and uh just enjoy the rest of the day it is only 20 to 4 right now so quite a bit of sunlight left um cook up some dinner tonight and uh sit around the fire and have a couple beers so uh talk with you guys later so yeah, I said I'd flip you around here and show you the fire pit. Um, that's kind of par for the course out here on the Colorado Trail, just a bunch of old wood. And then there's other people that come out here and hike and they, as you can see there in the bottom right, there's a like a tuna can or something. And I think there's an old can of baked beans in the fire pit. These, I don't know, people come out here and think that if they throw the can in there, it'll melt or whatever. You know, it's not a smelting furnace. It's not gonna melt aluminum. So, uh, like I said, we're gonna clean that thing out. And all of that wood over there, we've found that already processed land here. So, if somebody watching this has been out to the Colorado Trail recently at Bear Creek and, and processed a whole ton of firewood, thank you, we really appreciate it. Um, there's even more of that stuff um, laying around in, in the pile. So, like I said, we have probably 75% of the, the wood that we need right now just, just laying there from, from that uh, previous camper. So, like I said again, if you're out there, we appreciate it, thanks. So as you can see, we got our fire going. It is about 5.30, so it's about, about fire time. But I'm gonna walk you down here before it gets too dark out and show you our beer weir. This is a Homage to Mr. Joe Robnett. I think he's the one that coined the phrase beer weir. It goes down this little embankment here to our water source. And this is all snow melt water. So, if you look over here in the stream, you got a couple of beers in there. And that my friends, is the beer here. Those, those puppies are probably ice cold by now. All ready to be drank. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to grab one and head on back up and make some dinner. There we go. So for the dinner tonight, we're going to have Camp Chow uh, beef stroganoff. Um, Camp Chow is kind of my go-to kind of dinner company. I haven't had anything that I didn't like from them. And their uh, cinnamon honey couscous in the morning is to die for. My nine-year-old confiscates half of whatever I order to for him to eat. Um, so I have to kind of scrape the bottom of the barrel to fight him for for at least one camp, uh, one honey cinnamon couscous to bring out with me. But uh, yeah, like I said, Camp Chow has been my, my go-to meal for for a couple years now. Um, I've had the beef stroganoff before. I don't know if you can tell in here, but there's big old chunks of beef in it and some uh, big chunks of mushrooms. Um, really good stuff. Highly recommend Camp Chow. It's a, I think it's just a small mom and pop kind of kind of shop. And yeah, really good food. So just sitting here after dinner for a little while. Got the fire stoked up. Got some larger larger logs on it this time. And uh, about to fire up uh, Arturo Fuente work of art. Little cigar after dinner with a with another beer. But I would have would have showed you kind of uh, what the Camp Chow beef stroganoff looked like, but it was just way too good that didn't give you enough didn't give myself enough time to to show you what it looks like but there's some big chunks of uh, wild mushrooms in it 
like I, like I showed you, I don't know if you could see the, the chunks of beef in it. And like I said before, before I ate, it was, that, that's probably one of my favorite meals from, from them beside the breakfast, honey, cinnamon, honey, couscous. Um, so yeah, like I said, we just finished up dinner here. Uh, did a little bit of camp chores, cleaned up a little bit. Now we're starting to throw some of the larger rounds on the fire and getting it nice and hot, nice and warm, warm for us. It's not too bad out. It's probably, I'd guess, in the 40s. Um, I haven't looked at my thermometer that I have hanging on my ridge line lately, but I'd, I'd guess it's probably low 40s, high 30s. Um, it's really clear tonight, so it, it'll probably drop, um, I'd say, into the 20s, maybe mid, mid 20s. I'm not sure what the forecast is out here. But yeah, just gonna sit here and hang out for a while, probably do a couple more videos and just enjoy the fire and a, and a nice cigar. So uh, stick around and... Did you say something? I'm YouTubing. Oh. Amateurs, I swear. So uh, I'll get back to you later without Paul. Maybe I'll toss him into the drink over here, but I'll get back to you. Morning, Paul. Nope, just sitting down here by the fire ring. About to get some coffee on here. As you can hear, Paul just peeked his head out of the hammock. Uh, it's about, let's see, what is it? Right at seven o'clock, Sunday morning. And when I woke up, the thermometer that I have inside my hammock uh, under the tarp on the ridge line said 28 degrees was the coldest that it got. Actually, it was 28 degrees this morning. I think 26 was the coldest it got overnight. So, not bad at all. Had the 20 degree quilts, so nice and comfy. Pretty good night's sleep. Um, I did have to get up at about five to water the trees once, but that's to be expected. So, uh, yeah, about to get some coffee on and get some breakfast going and uh, shove off. I don't think we'll. I expect us to be out of out of camp by by nine, um, well before nine, I hope, and uh, get on the trail. And I'll hit you up later. So as you can see, we're all packed up, and it is about seven after nine. So didn't quite meet our nine o'clock uh, departure time, but I'm not going to worry about seven minutes. So all packed up. We did some work on the fire pit last night, so I left the campsite better than it was. Picked up a couple of pieces of trash that were here, um, and we all left some, some wood for the next people. So, here we are. Let's uh, get on the trail, and I'll take you down here. So, the, um, I was just standing at the campsite. So, I'll take you down here to the water source to show you how close it is. And you can either come down this, walk down the trail itself, um, down to it, or right past the fire pit, there's a um, kind of a little drainage canal, uh, drainage ditch that you can walk down. Um, that's a lot shorter, but this trail, the, the trail itself is a lot smoother, a lot nicer. Um, and that brings you right down here. Bear Creek. So it's, it's literally, I don't know, maybe 100 feet from the campsite down the, down the trail. So uh, yeah, we're going to hit it on the trail here for a while and uh, I'll get back with you a little bit later.
So this post you see there, I think this used to be a gate for an old motorcycle trail. It's obviously not used anymore. And there's uh, kind of remnants of logging trails back here too. So I guess this has been logged previously. But yeah, I don't know where that old motorcycle trail went or if it just used what is now the Colorado Trail. But that's since been closed. And uh, yeah, you can't ride motorcycles on the Colorado Trail. It's only hiking, obviously, mountain biking and equestrian use, like I said yesterday. So that's why the uh, trail is kind of graded as nice as it is, is because it's open for equestrian use. So, I'm gonna put you guys away for a minute, try and catch up to Polly. So to kind of give you guys uh, a kind of picture of what a month and some warm temperatures can do out here in Colorado, when we were out here in March doing the uh, same, same area, same segment, this whole trail was nothing but ice. You couldn't even see these rocks. Um, that snow there is, is actually ice, and that, I bet that's still five, six inches thick. But this whole climb up these rocks over here, that was nothing but solid ice. I mean, you could have, if you had ice skates, it would have been better than, uh, than hiking boots or trail runners, because like I said, that was just complete solid ice. You couldn't even see the rocks. But much easier hiking today. Uh, we've had a couple 70 degree days out here in Colorado already. And uh, yeah, a lot of it's melted off, but still, still a little bit of remnants of it. So as you can see, I finally caught up to Polly. He's been crushing some miles this morning, some elevation. Um, but yeah, we just came up here on this, uh, kind of this little saddle um, on top of this ridge. And th we were gonna come up here last night um, when we passed Bear Creek, West Bear Creek. Um, but the main thing is there's no water up here. So you'd have to backtrack, I bet half a mile to, uh, to West Bear Creek to get, to get water. Not a big deal, but it, it's kind of inconvenient. Um, but yeah, there's um, a lot of hammock spots around here. And I'll swing you around here to really nice uh, tent site back here. I don't know, they, looks like they corralled it in for some reason. Um, not sure, not sure why, but, but yeah, it's really a level spot, a uh, really good camp spot. Um, so yeah, kind of taking a little, little water break here and we're going to bust it down the trail and we don't have too much more elevation to go to gain yet. Um, the majority of it was done, done this morning. So once we get up to the high point on the trail of segment one, there's a lot of really good, uh, photo ops. Really, really nice little rocky point that you can stand out on and, and take some really good photos. So we'll we'll check back in you then. So we're up here at the high point of segment one. Um, so far, we've walked four miles today and gained about 1,500 feet in elevation, and we've only been hiking for two hours. So I'm calling that pretty good, especially gaining 1,500 feet. Uh, we started around 62, and we're at about 77 right now. So. Uh, yeah, out there behind me, that is the start of segment two. Segment two goes through that large burn area. Um, if you're planning on doing the Colorado Trail, segment two is a completely dry segment. So when you start segment two, you start down at the South Platte River, camel up there, fill up water there. Um, and I think segment two is 11.2 miles. So for those 11 miles, you have no water. Um, there is emergency water at the fire station in Buffalo Creek at the end of segment two. But like I said, you have to go through the uh, burn area. As you can see, very little shade out there. Um, I did it last or two years ago in July and it it fried me. It was it was very hot. So uh, yeah, like I said, we're up here at the high point, segment one. We're gonna take a little break here, have some snacks and uh, there's one, one more kind of, uh, climb up to a nice little rocky point after this. Um, but once we hit that, it's, it's all downhill to the car. So um, 
yeah, I'll check back with you here in a few and give you some shots of the trail, what the, what the trail looks like here at the end of uh, segment one. So see you soon. This here is probably one of my favorite sections of the trail. Got this pine forest here. Nice rolling trail, kind of right below a ridge, so it blocks the wind. And yeah, just a nice, nice area. Like I said again, this trail's outstandingly maintained. Um, <clears throat> we only passed one, one blowdown across the trail, um, and that had to have happened in the past month. But I don't think the trail crews have been have been out here yet. Still really early in the season. So I'm sure they'll be out here well before the through hikers start in July, making sure everything's everything's cleaned up for them. But yeah, just a really cool little section of trail through this thinned out forest here. that big outcropping up there is our next water stop. So we'll go up there and take another quick breather and after that she's downhill all the way. So we made it. Another successful trip. Back at Paul's Jeep here. Take us back to the beginning of segment one where my Jeep's at. But uh, yeah, and uh, another Nice thing about uh, these segments are the, the restrooms. I actually have, have a restroom at the uh, beginning and end of each segment. I know that for a fact through three. Um, I haven't personally been, been passed there, but uh, yeah. Like I said, another successful trip in the books and time to head home and get washed up and eat some grub.